Most NAT routers are installed so that a single, low-cost internet connection can be shared between two or more personal computers. However, a NAT router can be a great help even if only one computer is in use because every NAT router functions as a firewall gateway, allowing the user of that single computer to request web pages or begin dialogues with other servers all over the internet but discarding every incoming request from internet-based processes that want to begin an unanticipated dialogue. PCs are completely immune from external attack only when they are disconnected from the internet and switched off. Once turned on, a modern computer automatically loads an operating system and then begins loading and executing various processes. Some of these processes are vulnerable to attack. Generally, if you are not connected to the internet, you are pretty safe, but of course processes can be attacked by insertion of a thumb drive or loading of CDs or disk files in various ways. Furthermore, these processes can talk to one another inside your PC so that if one of them becomes corrupted, it could corrupt others. The big security concerns begin, however, when you connect your PC to the internet, especially if you have a full-time always-on, high-speed internet connection of the type that have become popular with cable or DSL modem technology. With a full-time internet connection active on your PC, if you are running any processes that can be exploited or attacked, they will be found exploited and attacked. And because PCs are so complicated nowadays, it's hard to know if you're running one or more vulnerable applications. Many of the processes that come native with your operating system need patches in order to defend themselves. Microsoft's Windows operating system, especially the older versions, is notorious for loading and executing processes that are really not necessary and that subsequently are found to contain vulnerabilities. Also, as you operate on the Internet, you may be tricked into running a process that could be attacked or compromised. Never click on an unknown email link. Anybody with experience on the Internet will tell you that you had better load some kind of a firewall to protect you in this situation, and the red rectangle in this diagram represents a software firewall operating inside your PC. When properly configured, a software firewall can give you pretty good protection. Unfortunately, software firewalls can be cumbersome and they can suffer from compatibility problems. They need frequent updating. They consume PC resources. They are difficult to remove, and you will feel your PC becoming more difficult to administer once a software firewall is installed. Accordingly, you may be tempted to remove or disable your software firewall. That's not a good idea unless you take extra steps to compensate. For most people, the best solution commences by inserting a low-cost hardware router using NAT, that's NAT or Network Address Translation technology, to serve as a hardware firewall device connecting you with the worldwide Internet. A NAT router like this is often combined inside your Wi-Fi equipment. The NAT router will come with an installation procedure, and as part of that installation, the IP address that your ISP originally assigned to your PC will be migrated to the NAT router, and the NAT router will assign a new private IP address to your PC. Thereafter, the NAT router will use some of its processes to replace or emulate the communicating processes in your PC. In effect, new processes on your NAT router will pretend to be the communicating processes on your PC. For any of the communicating processes on your PC of which the NAT router is aware, it can launch a corresponding process of its own, translating addresses and process IDs as necessary to protect the privacy of your PC. Your NAT router cannot know anything about any of the processes within your PC without help. Accordingly, if some hostile hacker out on the Internet sends you an evil packet intended to exploit some process like TCP process 80 inside your PC, he may think he's reaching your PC, probing it for processes, but he will actually be communicating only with your NAT router. 
and your router won't know how to respond for that target process. It's not running that process and doesn't know anything about any of the processes running in your PC unless it receives help from you. Accordingly, it'll have to simply ignore and discard that packet. Now, this is a good thing when the packet comes from an evil hacker, but your NAT router will ignore and discard all packets coming from the Internet for your PC unless you tell it about processes inside your PC that are expecting messages. You can use two distinct methods to tell your router what processes inside your PC are interested in receiving Internet traffic. The first method works with client processes and the second method is needed for server processes. Actually, the client technique works automatically. Your Internet browser is a good example of a communicating client process that wants to receive IP packets from the Internet. When you activate your browser on your PC, the operating system assigns it a communicating process ID. For our purposes in this discussion, we're going to assume that it is assigned TCP process number 2020. So, when that browser process begins operating, it, it sends a TCP packet addressed to a web server out on the Internet saying something like this. I am TCP process number 2020 on this PC, and I want to send this packet to my web server's homepage, and I expect an answer coming back to me as process 2020. When that outgoing packet arrives at the NAT router, it is, of course, encapsulated within the Ethernet frame that got it there, and at that point, the Ethernet frame is no longer needed, and it's just discarded allowing the NAT router to examine the IP packet inside. The destination IP address reveals that this packet is headed for some other computer out on the World Wide Internet, and the NAT router concludes that it need not change that destination IP address. However, the source and destination IP addresses are both preserved for future use within the router, and then the IP packet is, is discarded, revealing the TCP data inside. Examining the TCP data from this PC allows the NAT router to learn about process 2020 inside the PC which is sending this message. The NAT router then begins a new process of its own, pretending to be process 2020 as if it were still running inside the PC. For this discussion, we'll assume that the NAT router assigns its process ID 3000 to this new process. The NAT router then slightly modifies the TCP data to reflect this new process number for its purpose later on, and then re-encapsulates that TCP data inside a new IP packet, translating the IP addresses as necessary to preserve the privacy of the PC's local IP address by replacing it with its own IP address. This is the one that was originally assigned to the ISP, and it's 204.242.227.130 in this case. The destination IP address is not changed. The resulting, slightly modified IP packet is then encapsulated inside a new Ethernet frame, addressed to the DSL or cable modem, and sent on its way. The router dutifully sends your packet on out to the Internet. Typically, the TCP data will be sent to process 80, which is the well-known port address of a web server that's somewhere out on the Internet, which will eventually respond, sending back one or more packets in answer. When any of those answering packets returns from the Internet to your NAT router, the router will think, Ah, this is coming to my process 3000. I know where that goes and it'll relay the response back to your PC so that it can speak with the web server, maintaining a two-way dialogue exactly as one would expect. You can simultaneously run several copies of your web browser, speaking with several different web servers out on the Internet simultaneously using this mechanism. Each will be given a unique and distinct communicating process ID on your PC, so that each client process on your PC can speak with a server process somewhere out on the Internet with each message finding its own endpoints as appropriate. 
all of this happens automatically so that your NAT router always knows about all of the communicating client processes within your PC and opens pathways for those responses. This illustration then shows two client processes on your PC accessing server processes out on the worldwide internet through your NAT router. As we have explained, client processes in your PC are automatically handled by your NAT router because most of the activity done by users of computers on home networks or small office networks are using client processes. This is the usual arrangement for securing those computers using a hardware firewall NAT router. This configuration will automatically handle all of the most popular network tasks that are needed by a typical small office or home office user, including browsers, emailers, many peer-to-peer -peer applications, and client operation of most network games. As we said earlier, your NAT router always needs help learning about the communicating processes inside your PC that want to receive Internet information. This concludes our discussion of the first of two methods that your NAT router uses to learn about communicating processes in your PC wishing to communicate on the Internet. This automatic method works in behalf of client processes in your PC. It is complemented by a manual configuration mechanism in behalf of any server processes in your PC or PCs. That second manual mechanism has come to be known as port forwarding. And you can learn a lot more about port forwarding from other movies here at AskMrWizard.com. Before we conclude this movie on basic hardware NAT router firewalls in behalf of client processes, we should say a little bit about vocabulary. Throughout this movie, we have been referring to communicating software inside your PC as processes or as complementary processes inside the NAT router. We have referred to TCP numbers and UDP numbers when speaking of these processes. In the industry, it is commonplace to use the word port instead of process. And you will often hear about processes named port such and such, for example, port 80 or port 2020 or port 3000. Sometimes these port references are more specific. They may say, for, in, for example, TCP port 80 or UDP port 1645. Don't be confused when you hear or read these references to ports. Interpret the word port as a process referenced by a number as we have been doing in this movie and you will be able to understand what is going on very easily. Well, this has been kind of a propeller head episode, hasn't it? A little bit more complicated than most. I should point out that there is a companion episode, NAT Routers Part 2, that will take you a little deeper into this. And while you're thinking about it, now would be a great time to go look that article up at AskMrWizard.com. Thanks. We appreciate our many YouTube viewers. However, if you are trying to find our videos only on YouTube, you are missing out on a lot of our very best content. We have thousands of informative video clips like this one, and it can be difficult to find the others in proper sequence. On our site, these clips are also accompanied by related links, related text, still images, audio recordings, question and answer forums and advertisements from carefully selected vendors that understand these issues and want to help with their products. Please join us there. We appreciate your support. From YouTube, it's easy to find our site. Just click on the prominent link at the beginning of YouTube's descriptive text. Thank you.